find the 44 phonic sounds in English confusing, but would like to learn them so you can teach them to your child? Don't worry, by the end of this video, you would have learned all the 44 sounds, including their frequent spellings, so you can teach your child confidently and correctly. Hi, I'm Grace, welcome to my channel. One of the things that I'm truly passionate about is supporting parents, teachers, and organizations help children become successful readers and spellers in a short span of time. And before we begin with today's video, if you're new here, welcome. I do videos on early learning, positive parenting, and mindful living. So if that is something that you are looking for, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of those videos. Okay, I know you are eager to learn the 44 sounds and their frequent spellings, but before we begin, here's something important that I want to tell you. Teaching the correct pronunciation of sounds is extremely important because it is what will empower your child to read and spell words easily and accurately, including words that are new and big. I've seen many popular phonics videos for kids on YouTube teach the wrong pronunciation of sounds. And I have come across many teachers, including phonics instructors, do the same mistake. They add an extra sound called the schwa sound uh, to the end of letter sounds without even realizing that they are doing it. Like m instead of m, n instead of n. This might seem very simple, but you see phonics is all about sounds. So when the sounds are taught incorrectly, putting the sounds together to read or identifying sounds to spell words can be a real challenge, especially when the child moves on to reading big and unfamiliar words. Many children struggle because of this simple mistake that parents and teachers do. Let me give you an example so you understand better. Let's imagine that little Tom right here is taught the wrong pronunciation of sounds. Well, he might be able to get away with reading simple three letter words like mat by memorizing the incorrect sounds, mo, a, t, and then the corresponding word like mat. But then when he comes across a new word like the word masks, he would not be able to decode the word because he was taught the wrong pronunciation of sounds. You see, he can never get the word masks by blending m, a, s, k, s, unless someone helps him a couple of times, then he might memorize the incorrect sounds, m, a, s, k, s, and the word masks, just like how he memorized the three letter word, m, a, t, mat, or how we memorized word spellings back in school, m, a, s, k, s, masks. The only difference is Tom memorizes the incorrect sounds, whereas we memorized the word spellings. But you see, the whole purpose of teaching phonics is to empower children to read words, including words that they have not seen before, you know, big and new words, easily, accurately, and independently. But reason this out with me. What's the point of teaching sounds or phonics when children do the wrong sounds, not blend the sounds together to read? Instead, read words out of memory. You see what I mean? So the bottom line is, just like how we cannot reach our destination, if we board the wrong train, we cannot get the word right if we blend incorrect sounds together. So it is extremely important to teach the basics right, you know, teach the sounds correctly to our children. Anyway, let's begin with the 44 sounds now. To help you learn and remember the sounds easily, I have grouped them into two different categories, 26 letter sounds and 18 digraph sounds. So let's first begin with the 26 letter sounds in English. We all know that there are 26 letters in the English alphabet, out of which five letters, A, E, I, O, and U, are vowels and the rest are consonant letters. So let's first learn the sounds that the five vowel letters make. These sounds are called short vowel sounds. So A says A, ah, as in the angry alligator that screams A. Ah. E says eh, as in the exercising egg that goes eh, eh, eh. I says E, as in the itchy iguana who always itches around like 
e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e O is a little different. It is not a. Uh, it is a. Uh. To get the sound right, you just round up your mouth a little like so. A.、Uh. So a、uh, is American English and a、uh, is British English. And finally, U says a,、uh, as in the unhappy umbrella who sits outside looking up to see if it's gonna rain or not. A a a a. So those are the five short vowel sounds. A. A E A and A. Now let's move on to the twenty-one consonant sounds. B is a batting B that bats. B B B. C is a clapping cat that claps. K K K. D is a drumming dog that drums. D D D. And F is a freezing frog that goes. G is a gagging goose that gags. G G G. H is a hopping horse. That hops, and J is a jumping jellyfish that jumps, j j j, and K is a kicking kangaroo that kicks, k k k. L is a laughing lion that laughs, l l l. M is a munching monkey that goes, mmm, and N is a napping narwhal that naps, n. And P is a punching panda. Who likes to punch? P p p p p. Q is a quacking quail that goes qu qu qu, and R is a racing rhino that races r, and S is a singing snake that goes s. T is a tapping tiger who taps his feet like t t t t, and V is a violinist vulture that goes v, and W is a winking whale. That goes w w w, and X is a mixing fox that goes x x x, and Y is a yelling yak that goes y y y. Z or Z is a zooming zebra that goes z. Now let's move on to digraph sounds. Well, digraphs are two letters that make one sound. So to help you remember the sounds easily, I have categorized the sounds into four groups. Let's learn the first group of sounds, which are the long vowel sounds. Remember, we just learned the five short vowel sounds: a, e, i, a, and a. But instead of these sounds, if the vowels a, e, i, o, and u say their own name, like a, e, i, o, u, they are called long vowel sounds. And most of the times, instead of the letters, the long vowel sounds are represented by digraphs. Now let's learn the five long vowel sounds and their frequent spellings. A, as in the praying snail, that prays a. E, as in the reading deer, that reads. E and I, as in the fighting magpie that fights, I I I. O, as in the rowing goat that rows, O O. And U, as in the fuel puking newt that pukes fuel all the time, like U U. So to recap, the five long vowel sounds are A E I O and U. Now, moving on to the next group of sounds, we have the consonant team digraph sounds, which are two consonant letters that join together to make one sound. We have five sounds in this category: the sh sound, as in the shoeing sheep, that goes sh; the ch sound, as in the chugging chicken, that goes ch 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 ch; the ng sound, as in the ringing nightingale, that likes to ring the bell all the time. Ng, ng, ng. Finally, we have the voiceless th sound and the voiced th sound, as in the breathing panther who has difficulty breathing through his nose, so he breathes through his mouth. Th and th, th and th. So to recap, the five consonant team digraph sounds are sh, ch, ng, th, and th. Now let's move on to the third group of digraph sounds we call 
them the R control sounds. The reason why we call them the R control sounds is because when an R appears next to the vowels, it controls the sound that the vowels make and makes them say a new sound. We have three sounds in this group. The R sound, as in the harping starfish that loves to play the harp, R, R. The OR sound, as in the snoring boar that snores OR, OR, OR. And ER, as in the twirling spider that loves to twirl around, ER. So to recap, the three R control sounds that we have are R, OR, and er. By the way, if you're following British English, the R is silent, so the sounds are A, O, and E. Uh. Now, moving on to the final group of sounds, which are called the vowel team digraph sounds. As the name suggests, the sounds in this group are made by two vowels. However, a W or a Y can also join with the vowels to make the sound. There are five sounds in this group, the short ooh and long ooh sound, as in the cooking cuckoo that goes ooh, 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 ooh. The ow sound, as in the howling cow that howls ow, ow. The ah sound, as in the yawning crawfish that yawns ah, ah. If you are following British English, you got to round up your mouth a little bit to get the aw sound right. So it's aw, as in the yawning crawfish. So the American version is ah, and the British version, you gotta round up your lips a little bit to get the sound right, like aw. The oi sound, as in the oinking oyster, that goes oi, 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 oi. So to recap, the five vowel team digraphs are oo, oo, ow, ah, uh, and oi. So those are the 44 phonic sounds that your child needs to learn. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comments below and don't think twice. Just go ahead and hit the like button and share this video with your friends. And if you want to get the mnemonic cards that I used in this video, they are available on our website, learnsmart.com. I will leave a link to it in the description below. You can also check out our letter sounds, songs and stories booklet if you want to teach your child the 26 sounds through songs and stories. The link to this booklet is in the description below as well. And by the way, I will be doing a video soon on how to teach your child to read using phonics in seven simple steps. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload that video. Once again, I thank you for stopping by and thank you for watching this video. Until next time, take care and don't forget to be a little playful, mindful and intentional. I'll see you soon.